Will Korra be able to save her parents and prevent civil war? Chapter 4, Civil Wars Part 2. You're making a mistake. I wish it hadn't come to this. Right. The old, I wish it hadn't come to this line. I've appointed Judge Hota to oversee the trial. Uncle, my parents had nothing to do with the men who attacked you. So we should have nothing to worry about. I hope so. Korra knows this is wrong, right? But Udalak has established such a strong hold over her. She's not confident enough to resist it. She completely adopted the idea that Udalak was her master and that he was going to help her become everything she ever dreamed of. Now she's like one step too far into that relationship and into that ideal. Where's Varric? We should have closed our deal an hour ago. Would you relax? This place is great. And the best part about it, Eska, no Eska. doesn't know I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh. I wasn't hiding, hey. hey. I wasn't hiding. Hey. I'm not on the hunt for you, currently. Ooh. Boyfriend, bow to me when I exit. Yes, yes, my sweet koala no. otter. You are so cute when you grovel. Is it worth it? Don't let her treat you that way. I tried to break up with her, but Mako gave me terrible advice. Thank you, Mako. <laughs> yeah, it's all Mako's fault. You need to be honest with her. Mm -hmm. Tell her how you really feel. Honesty is for fools, kid. There he is, the man himself. If you want to ditch this girl, then make is he in the platypus bear? bear? Disappear like I did. That's what I said last episode. Ah, is that Julie? Julie. Oh Your my assistant's God. in there too. <laughs> you forgot the honey. Sorry, sir. I got a little something for you, round back. Round back. Oh, okay. Icky, where are you? Shoot, go bother someone else. Everybody here? Icky. Oh, thank goodness. Is she like Lord of the Lemurs or something? This Aww. is going to be a civilized breakfast. Do I have to go now? Actually, is there room for one more? Can they be my new brothers and sisters too? One thing I realized later after watching the last episode, there's a part in the last episode where Pema scolds her kids and says, why can't you guys get along, right? That was foreshadowing for Tenzin, Kaya, and Bumi and their adventure into the mountain where they didn't get along. I'm wondering what the other connections are between Aang's kids and Tenzin's kids. Where did the meeting happen? My parents' house. And who led this meeting? Your Honor, if I may. May what? May I declare a mistrial? Sit down. A for effort. My parents are innocent. I've heard all I need to. I'm so confused about the this political system. Like, did Udalak just roll up and install his own government? Or is this guy part of the Southern Water Tribe? I just need to be honest with you. You know, when we first met, there was this crazy spark, but I'm starting to feel like that spark is fading. I agree. It is as if a great chasm has formed between us and nothing can bridge it. Oh, oh yes, I am so glad. And that you chasm understand. is named Desna. Nothing that is except marriage. <laughs> Oh! We will wed at sunset. You may express your joy through tears. <laughs> oh On the charge of treason, you are all found guilty. The punishment for this crime is death. No, that's not gonna happen. Um, Cora? <laughs> so about this balance thing, Cora's gonna balance her foot right up your head. You take their lives and I'll take yours. Cora, calm down. I'll talk to him. Right. Good cop, bad cop. Show these men and my brother mercy. Very well. Your lives will be spared, but you will live them out in prison. <sighs> it's still not... Thank you, Uncle. No. He's tricking you. Can't you my see that? Dad, don't you blueberry spice it. Yes, <laughs> Turns it an Iki, just living in a cave. We should have Uncle Boomy and Aunt Kaya come visit. No. I bet they'd like it too. Let's not. Aunt Kaya is super nice and pretty and always asks me how I'm feeling. And Uncle Boomy is like the funniest person in the world. But what about Milo? And Jinora can be so sweet and gentle. Being part of a family is hard, huh, Daddy? I couldn't agree with you more. Two generations, same exact spot. The Sky and Bison babies seem to get along, though. the nice though. part about a family is they'll always be there for you. Even though Twinkle Starchild and Princess Rainbow fight, oh, they still there you love go. each other. And let's bust you out of here right now. Cora, no. Just promise me you won't do anything rash. Fine. I promise. Cora, rash? Never. Nuh-uh. I hate feeling so helpless. I know. Nothing rash. Oh no. What are they gonna do? 
Oh my god. Very subtle. <laughs> orders what are right. you talking yeah, of about course. I, i've worked for your uncle for years he said he needed everyone to think the trial was fair okay well that answered my question at least then why did he have you free my mother and change your sentence he's trying to keep you on his side yeah. but he also wants your father out of the way just like when he got your father banished what do you mean what he got my father banished this guy's good he knows what he's doing hey there dad <laughs> you're looking well i mean it's a great statue hope i made you proud of course he'd be proud of you, Boomy. Thanks, Kaya. You always know when I need a hug. Sweet. Unalak's a liar and a traitor. I've been trying to tell you He's that still from in the get-go. <gasps> Unalak hired the barbarians to attack their tribe. Oh. Then he told them to hide in the spirit force, knowing my dad would go after them. Unalak wanted your dad out of the way so he could become chief. Hmm. Something he has in common with Ozai, kind of. It was a setup. Just like the whole trial. I can't believe I trusted him. It's understandable. She got caught in a very human way. Some people are just really good at reading us and knowing what it is that we really want and then like seeming to offer it to us, which makes us sort of surrender to them. There's a book called 48 Laws of Power, which you guys might be interested in if you like this kind of thing. And it talks about how to have power over others. And when I first read the reviews of it, I saw a lot of people bashing the book and saying that trying to have power over other people is unethical. But for me, that was surprising to see people look at it that way because the reason why it was interesting to me was not because I wanted to have power over others, but because I don't want other people to have power over me. And so it's good to know what those things are so that you can insulate yourself from them a little bit. You know, I think it's important to put your trust in the right places and not be so exposed to people who are looking to twist your desires into their own personal gains because it's unfortunately very common. I think it's especially common in the public arena, right? Like for every wonderful cause there is in the world, there are always going to be people who use those causes as a mask to get into your heart and then see you as like a limb for their own desires. Being cynical is not ideal. You know, you want to be open. You want to be a warm person, you want to engage with the world. But I think that the more you understand your own vulnerabilities, your own weaknesses, and the more you understand common tools of exploitation, the better your choices become about who to trust and who to open your heart to and who who to be convinced by. You know, We all have vulnerabilities. We all have hopes and dreams that people can exploit. Anyone who thinks otherwise, anyone who thinks they're totally immune to that, in a way, might be the most vulnerable because that probably means there are blind spots. I'm busting my father and the rebels out of jail. Will you help me or not? Of course I'll help. Me too. Count me in! Are you gonna do it in the bear platypus suit? No, stop it. Oh, that's cute though. I don't even <laughs> want to know. That she decided we should get married! Sorry. I don't I'm like his hair sure though. The guy is supposed to give the girl the betrothal necklace. I guess Eska didn't get the memo. Look, the only way to deal with crazy women is to lie big and leave fast. <laughs> Lucky for you, Varric's got your back. Oh my god. Yeah, what? Cute. <laughs> what the hell? Lie big and leave fast? Words to live by. Varric, my man. I'm not condoning that behavior. I'm not, I just, the, with, the confidence with which he said that is staggering. <laughs> I'm gonna get that tattooed on my forehead. You know what? Forget everything I ever said about being a good person. I'm gonna, I'm joining the Varric school of living. He's convinced me. What's weird about Varric right now though is like, he's not good, right? Like, just because we happened to find out that Udalak did something terrible, Varric was plotting this thing before we knew that. And I don't think he knows that. So, he's not, like, a trustworthy person. I mean, well... Pff. Duh. <laughs> Lie big and leave fast. Not you, though. You're stuck. Congratulations, by the way. But I still expect you to show up. I can't do this by myself. Yeah, well, how much do you need? Two weeks. Two days. Where's my father? On a ship headed to the Northern Tribe. As the Avatar, you cannot threaten war. You must remain neutral. You're not really neutral if you're being controlled. You got this, Cora. I believe in you. You don't want unity. You want power. I see she's been watching A Goodwin TV. You got him banished so you could become chief, and I bet it just killed you to learn he was the Avatar's father. Oh, no yeah. wonder you kept trying to take me away from him. Mm -hmm. All I've ever wanted is to help you realize your destiny. He can't turn it off, this guy. You've served your purpose. Oh, that was cool. Huh, so he's not just a powerful spirit guy, he's also, also a waterbender. 
If we get to Varric's boat, we can still save your father. Look at my cute little bull in. You have a license for that animal? Shoot Lee, do the thing! <laughs> that platypus bear is pooping money! <laughs> Angs on the money, that's so cool. I didn't notice that. If only we had a plane to get me close to those ships, I could water bend them out of the way. A plane? But well, why didn't you say so? Wow, look at an airship. That just tugs at all my JRPG heartstrings. Captain, you are never gonna believe this. <laughs> right, platypus bear is driving the ship. Wow. No, the airship! You had it for three- for four seconds. My JRPG dream is dashed. Sweetie, you're okay! Oh, do you have something you want to say to your sister? I'm glad you're back. Sorry we made fun of you. Wanna play airball? Sure! Yeah! I wanted to apologize for how I acted yesterday. We're sorry for dumping our frustrations with Dad out on you. Yeah, you didn't deserve that. That is one good-looking family, huh? I want to see that again. Look at middle-aged Katara. That's awesome. Baby Tenzin. That's one happy family. You know what they say, when it comes to family, nobody gets out unscathed. You can't really figure it out. I think it's partly a function of the fact that, like, your family is sort of a model for the world, and it's your testing ground. Like, puppies, and kittens too, for that matter. They'll play fight, and they'll bite each other, but then they'll learn from their reaction of their siblings. So they know when they overstep the line, when they bite too hard. And that early socialization helps set them up for understanding boundaries in like social order. We think of ourselves as like superior to animals, right? But there's something similar there for us as well. We learn boundaries from our, our family and we're socialized by our family, obviously. But with humans, it's it's weird because it's not as much physical as it is like deeply emotional. It's like we, we test each other's emotional boundaries all the time. We also workshop ourselves in front of our family and so we're extra vulnerable with them. You're in this exposed state where you're developing yourself. So any injustice, any point where people actually cross the line and it's not play, it's like destruction or malice that cuts so much deeper and it leaves wounds that are way more lasting because it's like a sacred space you know where you're you're developing so resentment forms more easily but in a way it's nice to think about it that way because then you can kind of it's easier to forgive maybe i've spoken about this a lot it's like a big thing with me the idea that realizing that people you you look up to your guardians are the same as you just as flawed i really do think that that's a key thing to adopt in order to like free yourself of baggage you know at least that's been my experience anyway to wrap up this long rant i think the measure of health is not that there are fights or that there's conflict but that the family can survive it and that they can make up when it's necessary like both generations did in this episode my own brother betrayed me and our entire tribe what's our next move yeah that's what i was gonna ask what's next i'll be proud to fight alongside you dad no, Cora. The best way for you to help is by getting the President of the United Republic on our side. The South can give Unalak a good fight for a while, but we'll need the United Forces in order to win this war. Time to enter politics. Not really Cora's strongest suit. I really need to thank you, Cora. For what? I started a civil war. Oh yeah, she freed exactly. him from- Exactly! Now Esk and I are officially broken up. Oh, looks like we have company. Oh, and no. not the fun kind! What is that? Is it Eska? It is Eska. Oh no! Oh! That would be my darling Eska. Quick question, is this thing fast enough to get away from my crazy water bedding ex-girlfriend? Why do you think I built this boat? <laughs> well at least she's alone for the first time ever. At some point you just gotta give up and just go with the flow. Rather than trying to break up with Eska, you can just focus on getting her brother out of there. Would you guys date Eska? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> we had two Civil War episodes and no Civil War, but now the Civil War will begin. And Korra will enter politics, which is not her strongest suit. But I guess that means we're going to be introduced to the president, which I'm curious to see. All right, that's the end of this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we will see you next time.